hey, it's your last Automator, and uh, you're going to watch a video here in a couple minutes, um, and actually I had to bring in Tank uh, from the forum, Auto Hockey Forum, uh, and uh, I got stuck doing this API call. I was working with uh, uh, Dylan, and he wanted to start off learning APIs, and so we picked this one API that he liked, and it was interesting as we were getting this really weird, this error, let me read it here, um, it says, no mapping for the Unicode character exists in the target multi-byte code page. Um, I Googled it, found a couple things on the forum, but nothing major, nothing I could adapt, and I tried, it didn't work. So finally I called in Tank. Um, it took him a while, and you're gonna see here in the video, you know, him working through it. Um, I'm gonna edit it down, because he, he did a bunch more stuff, and then I ended up removing it and setting, you know what, this is fine. So it's gonna be a little choppy, but there's some really good learnings in here. Um, some of the learnings that I, I found out was the uh, response text that comes back. You can use, usually that'll have text in it, right? If you're actually getting something that has text, you can access it. Sometimes there's some characters that the object you're using can't handle. And what you can also do is you can parse, you can take the response body and shove it into, this is where it gets really, for me, really complicated. You have to, it's a, um, what was it? It's an array of bytes that you have to iterate over, shove them back into characters and make sense of it. Um, what's really cool is that it always has that. So theoretically, you would never actually have to use response text, even though it's simple, you could always use this other approach and it should work every time, um, regardless of what comes back from, you know, the, the text that comes back from it. Cause it's really the same kind of content, just not as characters that we can read. Right, so it's like a more like a binary type approach. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoy the video. I learned a lot from watching and talking through Tank, the stuff with Tank. I uh, hope it helps you. Cheers. Here we are. Okay, so we were getting this crazy. What was it in the response text? Multi-character. Well, here, let's yeah. show it again. So this was getting this error. Um, so, so here's the error that's caused by this line here, right? Um, and, and it's no mapping for a Unicode character exists in the target multi-byte multi -byte wide code page. That sounds really bizarre. Yeah. Um, and, and so, uh, there's some character in the response field. It's invisible. Um, I'm probably going to bet that it's a null, um, but uh, for, for some reason, auto hockey can't. Well, auto hockey can't deal with null. Doesn't know what to do with it. All right. Okay. Um, so. So it's a good thought and it works 99.999% of the time to just take the response text from an HTTP call and, and use it as is. Mm -hmm. uh, however, um, uh, that, is not, uh, that, that is not working here. We're, we're getting uh, characters that back that it can't encode. And so since the uh, HTTP object uh, the win HTTP request similarly does not know what to do mm -hmm. with those special encoded characters that are really not supposed to come back as part of the spec anyway. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't know what to do. This object itself um, does not know what to do with those characters either, except spit them back out as is. Um, So, uh, so we get this, this thing in the response text that response text is just text. It's expecting visible, normal, printable characters, uh, and, and we're getting other than that. So it's kind of like getting a file instead yep. of getting text. So there's another property in the, in the HTTP uh, requests uh, response body, but it is an uh, an array or object uh, to auto hotkey. Um, now, I, I'm going to go ahead and explain that that we know that there's 190 characters um, because we checked by examining the output in an HTTP 
P listener like Fiddler. Uh, however, uh, can you switch us over to Fiddler? No. Or, 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 or the uh, advanced REST client? I don't care which one. Okay, well, I'll, I'll do the REST client since it's something new. Okay. All right. So in, in the advanced REST client oh, here, um, right? So, so we, we, we have this response. Uh, it's, it's okay. We, we don't see anything amiss here. Um, but, um, I'm trying to remember where I, over on the right, the size says 190 bytes. Is that, uh, yeah. Um, but I want to, I want to actually look at the headers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so when we go back and we look at the response headers, yeah. Okay. Somewhere in uh, there. It, yeah. it shows yeah. that it was a content length of 190. Interesting because Fiddler showed 191, which we knew was wrong. I don't know where that extra character came from for them. Um, so, so we can pick out that length there uh, and, and know what it's supposed to be. Um, I just want to show where we get the number from. Well, in 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 back in the auto hotkey when you use the. Response headers all. What was it? Response. It, that's where we would get it, right? And programmatic, yeah. you can grab that and then use it in the uh, function or, or whatever we're yeah. creating. Yeah, I, I just uh, I, I I wanted to show that this isn't even an auto hotkey thing. It's right. specifically related to a header that's returned through the HTTP yep. protocol. Okay, so we so we know the length. Um, Programmatically, if we were doing this to be more robust, I would read that header and get the value and right. use that for the loop here, right. um, because I, I don't really have a length object. Um, for some reason, the byte, the the, the four in, uh, didn't work. Um, now that I'm, uh, so that uh, we're going to skip past that, but. So what we're doing here is, so since this is an array of bytes, okay, yeah. it's an array of whether you're 32-bit or 64-bit OS, single characters. Okay, now they're single characters. Now, so when you read those those uh, values out of the the uh, the object, um, they they will show up as the uh, character codes. Oh, okay, all right. I'm okay. With you. Yeah, yeah, I. So, so the first item in the in the array is zero, array minus one, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we loop through them all, and we pass them through auto hotkeys, right? Uh, character A lookup code right. converter, yeah, right. And, and and we're appending this to this text. So starting at the beginning and and whatever, and and, and then it it spits it out, and then we're running it to a, a debug window, uh, and, and um, oh, and every, sorry, I just noticed we still on line twenty one. We have the response get all head response headers right there, right? So when we yes. run it, we'll see the, the, the 190 that we were just discussing. Yes. Um, so if I run it, you know, we, we see that we get the proper JSON text back. And, and um, I, I don't know how to, it does all tab here. No. Yeah. Um, there it but, is, about the fifth one down. Content length is 190. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Yeah. So, um, again, we could have, res uh, um, uh, uh, read the response header, but we, yeah, so we just, get that for the sake of this demo, we, right. we just, yeah. And, yeah. And, but I, I didn't want to show that just only in an auto hotkey thing because, right. Uh, one, one of the things that irritates me, uh, I think a lot in a mini rant here is, is the fact that so much of these API calls people think are because of something in auto hotkey and they're not. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. These are part of a spec 
uh, for the underlying API. They are not part of AutoHotKey. This is just reading some properties from a Windows-based API. Um, implementing I, an HTTP protocol. Uh huh. Can I ask you one question? Because um, I've I, I knew there was that body thing. Like you saw, I have a, a default that pulls up with all the like different response things you can get. But I've never really looked at them a lot, other than sometimes I know I need to go to the body, especially if it's like a post request, right? If I remember right. But um, on normal requests, I know this one was a little haywire because of that character. Um, could I do the same thing? Could I look at the response text and say, oh, here's my JSON text? Or I could actually get the body and then run it through this. And, the, and would that give you the same you thing? You can always do the body. Okay. I didn't, I wasn't aware of that. Cool. Yeah, you can always do the body. And and the beauty of that is if it's a file, mm -hmm. then you get the binary values of the file, okay? So if they had returned a PDF as a download, yeah. right, you could spit, you know, you could do a file append yeah. with this bytes index minus one. Yeah. Um. Uh, I'm sorry, with with the with, with, uh, character reader, yeah. uh, bytes minus one, yeah, one. And, and still get it. Um, now, to that... Uh, yeah, it's still it's solid. It, it yeah. is, is going to work for 99% of all use cases. So just go back and take that, get the, uh, the length and put that at the end of 17 uh, in place of the 190. Yeah, and I'm good to go. Yeah, yeah, and and I think it's H when it uh, HTTP get request header and uh, the name of the the name of that parameter, which I length. think is content dash length. Hmm. Yeah. I'll just run it. We can see the yeah content dash dash length. Yeah. And um, and then use that for the number of loops, but. Um, anyway, you, you, you get the idea. The, the, the ultra simplistic version of this works really well and, and it will do what you need. Cool. There's a, there's a, a VB function that gets referenced all of the time to yeah. convert byte arrays to strings, but this is essentially what it's doing anyway. That's awesome. That, that was driving me nuts. Um, I've never seen that type of response and and didn't had no clue what to where to go so that's very cool all right to wrap this up uh i took what tank did thank thankfully he uh figured it for me because that was just way beyond me but um i took it and uh as we mentioned um this is the response header content length so that'll automatically programmatically grab that for us um, and i shoved it all into a function because i'm going to put this function into my library and then i can just call it and um, I push the object to it, and in here I do all the fancy stuff of um, getting the body, shoving into bytes, and then getting the looping over this by the content length. You know, each time um, this is an array, and this is where I was hoping I could have gotten rid of, you know, use this there, but I realized like that has to be just shoved into here in order for this to work properly. But um, and I return the text, and that comes up here. So now when I run this. I'll hit my hotkey and bam, it goes and does all that for us. So that way, if this changes, so how cool is the automator? Pretty cool, I think. Save it and run it. Um, so now it takes the new stuff, right? And it'll dynamically update every time. Uh, and uh, that's it. Yeah, obviously we have to parse the JSON and get exactly what we want. But, uh, and I also moved my authorization uh, granted i'm going to go change that token so everyone doesn't use it but um i brought it outside the script and that way if i share the script with someone i don't have to worry about having my credentials in there all right hope that helps cheers hey thank you for watching that video and i don't know if you're aware but we actually do offer services so if the stuff you're learning here is a bit above you or you just don't have time reach out to me at joe at the automatorcom and we can talk about how we can help you